thank you, Chair. Councillor Sorry, before you do, um, could I just ask um, everybody, please, um, particularly if you're not a member of the committee, could you please ensure yourself, you put yourselves on mute? We get, or at least I do, I get a, like a feedback through through the background. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. You. Councillor Cheadle. Yep, I'm here and I can hear. Thank you. Councillor Crozier. I'm here and I can hear. Thank you. Councillor Hipsy. I'm here and I can hear you. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Mott. Councillor Mott. Councillor Moyes. Present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. I am present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Renders. Councillor Renders. Councillor Vashon. Present and can hear. Councillor Yelland. I'm present and can hear. Thank you. Uh, can I go back to Councillor Mott? Councillor Mott. My apologies, but my apologies, Chair. I was just sorting out childcare. Thank you. I'm Thank here. You. Thank you. And Councillor Renders. Councillor Renders. So we'll just keep to have councillor renders at the moment chair thank you okay well we can just give him a couple of minutes because this one isn't due until um start until quarter to 11 anyway thank you um actually i did forget to um ask vicky to confirm that the live streaming was back up and running actually yes we are live thank you thank chair. you Ho hopefully with no issues again this time <laughs> well done thank you well if we just pause and um for a few a couple of minutes um uh until quarter to anyway check if Councillor Renders is back before we start. Sorry, can I confirm you'd like to pause the live stream? Um, it's up to you whether you, you can keep keep it running or... or, or um, it would be or, easier or, to leave it running if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, that's, fi yeah, that's fine. Cause Sorry, no Chair, I am here. Okay. You are here. Okay, dokie. <laughs> right, okay, well, we still probably need to wait to quarter two, don't we, because that's the published time. And um, anybody who wants to join on YouTube probably won't arrive until quarter to 11. So... Um, Thank you, everybody, for being so prompt in your return. Um, yeah, just just chair. Um, it's uh, the gatekeeper here, Janice Young, just yep. waiting for Councillor Lamb to join us too. Okay, okay, all right, okay, thank you. So we will just uh, hold on to quarter two. I've got the chairman and photograph now on. I mean, I'm okay, it is a uh, quarter to eleven, so we will make a start on the next application, which is um, uh, item three four three four two four four slash nineteen full which is the field um, adjacent to the Wilcombe Road, Beer Alston and Ms Hauslander, I believe, is the planning officer. So over to you, please. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, 
can you confirm that you can see that? I can indeed, thank you. Great, thank you very much. So, as, as you said, this is for 3424.19 full. Um, the application site is identified um, on the plan um, with the hatched in red, uh, which is um, to the west of the Bowling Green and to the east of the uh, uh, recent development at the Down. Uh, you can see it slightly more clearly here, the outline to the site, if you can see my um, my pointer is as uh, shown. Uh, this is the down here. This is the bowling club. Um, Councillor Crozier asked me earlier on today to identify for members the um, access to the bowling club, which is here. Um, the junction between Woolacombe Road and the down, which is here. And there's another junction, sorry, it's not actually on the plan, between 4th Street and Woolacombe Road, which is just down here. There were some photos in my presentation of that junction. So this is the application site. This is the, the recently developed uh, development at the down uh, and the boundary runs along here up towards this hedge here, which is the uh, Woolacombe Road um, edge to the site. I've got another photograph which then goes along. This is the bowling um, club here and this is the boundary to the site down here. Um, this is a sort of strange little, if I just show you on the, this little area here, which is the, the area um, which the photograph is showing. And then there's a closer up view of that. And this is development to the uh, west, uh, east of that uh, part of the application site. Uh, this is looking at the site from um, Woolacombe Road. Again, this is the boundary with the B3257. Um, Again, bowling club over here. So it's a green field currently. Um, this is uh, Woolacombe Road looking um, uh, east. Uh, and this is the site boundary and the access is likely to be in this location roughly here. Um, this is the um, junction at the end of that road. So if you like, um, at eastwards and this is the I think it's the Colleton uh, junction um, this is looking from outside the junction towards it this is the junction itself uh, this is uh, the sort of visibility if you like looking towards beer also, beer ferries uh, and this is the uh, visibility looking the other way which is slightly more restricted um, again looking at Willicombe Road um, these are the properties uh, obviously opposite the entrance to the site and this is the junction so this is looking at the junction uh, the down properties are here um, this is Wollacombe Road coming down to the down this is the junk this is a junction leading towards the down and then obviously the Bedford Street which is just in front of the um, Georgian house and this is the uh, junction looking the opposite way um, down the down the down excuse me for that so um, this is the this is this this is the site um, itself but before I go on to that I just needed to let you know about a few updates that uh, since um, the, the published published of the um, committee report um, first of all I just wanted to let you know that the ecologist has come back and has asked uh, has no objections, but has asked for um, a condition to be added with regard to the um, landscape and environmental management plan, which is already actually on the report anyway. Um, and uh, he's also asked for an adherence to the ecology report um, condition. And he's also asked for um, a, a, an addition to the section 106 to secure the management and maintenance of the landscape and environmental management plan into the future. Um, so any decision on this, if it were to be approved, would need to be subject to those additional conditions. Um, the uh, the AOMB um, team also came back to me um, and have now, ha having seen the revised plans, have no objections to the scheme. Um, and the parish council raised concerns after the application was sent to the ward members for consideration. The parish council raised a few additional concerns which um, have been addressed uh, in the report. But for clarity, I just wanted to make sure members were aware of those concerns. Um, 
they were concerned about whether the roads uh, on the site would be adopted. They were concerned about street lighting. Um, they were concerned about this junction and the other junction that I've shown photographs of. Um, they wanted to make sure the footpath between the bowling green and the um, across the site was lit um, and were concerned that it that it should be lit. Um, in addition to that, the applicant has been asked um, some some uh, investigations were carried out post chair's briefing to, to establish what the situation was with regard to uh, refuse lorries using the um, getting onto the site and being able to to take the rubbish away. Um, and um, they've confirmed that whilst um, they don't like to go on unadopted roads, they they could. Um, but in order to allow for them to go onto the site, we've um, requested that the applicant consider um, increasing the amount of tarmac so that there's a, a space at the top of the site for refuse lorries, which are 26 tonne vehicles, to be able to turn and not encroach onto the paviors, which um, are not necessarily um, adequate to cater for that turning movement. So we haven't had a plan or, uh, indicating that yet, but I anticipate having that plan um, before the decision is finally issued. Um, there's also um, an additional condition that we'd like to add with regard to the parking spaces for the four bed dwellings. Um, the supplementary planning document does require three spaces for four bed dwellings. Um, and whilst there is space on the four bed dwelling sites, they don't um, indicate three spaces. So um, an amended plan is also expected just to indicate that there, are, there is room for three spaces on each of those sites. Sorry, I should have uh, let you know those updates at the beginning. Apologies. We'll just move on to the site layout now. This is the site layout. This is the B3257, which runs uh, into the centre of Beer Alston. Um, and this is the Woolacombe Road down here, which is where the access is proposed. Um, it's uh, proposed uh, to also um, sort of break through the, the Devon Hedge, but then to replace, um, replace it and put some additional elements of it into the site so that the, the rural edge, if you like, is maintained. Um, in the middle of the site, you'll see that there's an area of open space, which was what was required through policy H2 in the neighbourhood plan, as well as the children's uh, play area um, in here. Um, there's also a public footpath which runs across the site through through the down and also to the bowling club. The application, as you can see, has sort of a, a slightly changed the route uh, of the um, public right of way. That is something which needs to be um, resolved via different legislation. But as I understand it from the applicant, that uh, the application to slightly amend the, the route has been already submitted to Devon County Council for their consideration. Clearly, if that isn't allowed, then the layout would have to change slightly, which would probably mean a, a, a separate variation, Section 73 application, in order to achieve this. Uh, the, the, the dwellings, uh, uh, so I'll move on to the next slide. The dwellings are all two storey. Um, and uh, as on this slide, you can see the uh, photovoltaic um, panels, which are um, in, on all uh, roof slopes, which are either south or west facing. So in, in total, there are eight properties which don't have the photovoltaics, but the rest of them do. Um, and in terms of uh, the uh, energy uh, from this, from, from the development, they've they've achieved uh, the the photovoltaics, but they've also they're also doing um, a fabric first approach, which involves um, high levels of insulation, um, as well as um, other fabric um, initiatives in order to achieve um, what is required by policy dev thirty two in the joint local plan. Um, just to confirm as well, um, because the site's in the AOMB, it was uh, throughout the negotiations, it's been highlighted that there's a, there's a need for uh, quite a lot of landscaping within the scheme to soften the soften the built form and to soften the in relation to the AOMB. The, this, this part of the site, the northern part of the site, is quite visible from wider areas um, to the north, which are also within the, the AOMB. Um, and as a result, the um, hedgerow along here will be um, 
reinforced with vegetation but also with tree planting um, and there's a group of trees proposed in this corner here um, and then there's also trees proposed I think there's something like 400 trees in total proposed across the whole site to try to help to break up the the, the built form on the site so there are 31 houses proposed and there's a mix of one two three and four bed dwellings um, and um, I'll just move on now just to show you um, some examples of the elevations that uh, are proposed. Um, so this, this is, so there's a mixture in terms of the elevations in, in terms of materials. They all have natural slate roofs, um, but they have a, a mixture of render and natural stone uh, and then slate hanging and, and render. Um, and again, slate like hanging and render. It's just to provide a, an example, really, of the types of uh, uh, properties proposed. And that's all render. And then again, slate and render. Um, and that's uh, that's the end of my presentation. So, if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the committee, do you have any questions? Yeah. Councillor Hipsy, then Councillor Moyes. Uh, thank you very much for the very um, thorough presentation. Um, I was just uh, interested in uh, your reference to Policy Dev 32. Mm. Um, looking at paragraphs four and five of Dev 32, I wonder if you can tell me, please, um, if this development counts as a, as a major development in, in, in the sense that uh, paragraphs four and five would apply in, in this is for solar um, solar access and uh, incorporating carbon renewable energy generation please it is it is a major development yes um, and the uh, applicant submitted an energy statement um, which I just actually don't have on this uh, presentation I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, which indicates that the development does achieve 20% less than the building regs requirements in terms of um, uh, climate or carbon reduction. Thank you. I, I, I note that, well, perhaps I ought to bring that up in debate. I, I'll leave that. Thank you for your answer for now. And um, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we can discuss that when we get to debate. Thank you very much, Mr. Handler. Thank you. Councillor Moyes, then Councillor Mott. Uh, yes, the affordability... It, are these properties going to be affordable for the local community? We, we've had a few issues in recent applications about the actual uh, meaning of the word affordability. Perhaps you can confirm. Well, there are nine um, affordable units uh, on the site um, itself. Uh, half of those will be um, for social rent. Um, so there are some affordable units on the site. Um, I'm afraid I don't know what the um, what the cost of the dwellings will be. Some are smaller, two beds, some are three beds and some are four beds. Uh, there are also two one bed flats. I think they're part of the affordable um, part of the site. So there are some affordable dwellings on the site, um, but I'm afraid I'm, I can't comment on the price that, 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 that these will we will sell for. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I can answer any more than that. OK, thank you. Councillor Mott, then Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chair. Um, it might well be that my question needs to be directed to the agent. So my apologies, Ms. Houselander, for <laughs> directing it to you. Um, right. It's... It, it's brilliant to see that there are some solar panels on the majority of the housing. It's disappointing though, or is there any particular reason why they've not been included on the social housing element of the application, where you could argue that actually that would be where it would serve a greater purpose? I think you've got a good point. Um, uh, and uh, probably that question does need to be addressed <laughs> to the um, to the agent. Um, I think a little bit of it might be around the uh, fact, the, the um, orientation of the roof slopes, because you can't put solar panels on um, east or north facing roof slopes because they don't achieve, they don't get um, enough sunlight. Um, but I think that is a question actually that should be addressed to the uh, um, to the agent. 
I, I will raise it again then if I'm allowed to chair. Thank you. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. A <clears throat> um, couple of uh, questions. Um, the street lighting and the lighting within the site, is that intended to be low level lighting? Uh, certainly, if, if I just explain the uh, southern hedge, which is the hedge along the bottom of Wollong Wollongong Road, has, has, has been identified as having some um, use by bats, and so therefore the ecologist um, has asked that lighting is um, carefully considered on the site, particularly along this along this edge. Um, the lighting hasn't. Um, being um, identified internally into the site yet because we've asked, we've, I've put a condition on the consent to um, to receive a proper lighting um, schedule for the whole site um, because of the ecolog ecologist concerns actually. Um, so um, if, if members were of the view that low level lighting was preferred, then I'm sure that could be um, could be conveyed and could be included within the discussion around the lighting when the condition is being discharged. Right, thank you. Because I mean, it's a very prominent site. This is, and and if we have traditional uh, street lighting on this site, uh, should it be approved? Um, you know, the the uh, light contamination will be quite intense when it's viewed from quite a wide area because of the elevated position of this site. Yeah. So I think it's something we should be looking at. I must say, I'm not happy at how many items of coming forward and being updated verbally um you know we seem to have a, a lot of uh things that are, we're being given this morning which uh, are, seem to be being done at the last minute before, just before the committee meet and i'm wondering whether we should defer this chairman this uh, uh, a decision on this application until we've got everything all together in uh text form because um it, it's it's quite concerning with a with an application of this size um my other question was to do with the paviers how do we stand if we approve if should this application be approved today and then the uh developers decide not to extend the tarmac surface on the uh inner road how do you stand then because we we have a situation where we know that the damage that are done to a pavia service by our, re, our refuse and recycling trucks will, within six months, cause quite considerable damage to pay any paviers. And, you know, it's something that should have been sorted out long before now with this application. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, it's it, it, it's it's. It, because it changes the whole aspect because if the trucks can't go on the paviers there's going to have to be an area designated for the storage and uh, collection of of the recycling and, and waste materials from these houses if, uh, if i can just um use the plan again just to identify uh what we're the areas where um that that in fact is happening um clearly this this uh route down to these five houses down here is is would be very difficult for refuse lorry to to go down so there is a, a, a an area here where um bins would be um collected from the houses and then and collected from the by the refuse uh, yeah, lorry. sorry i'm I've, I've obviously made not made myself clear i'm looking at the end of the of the inner road where we're going up to the six houses at the end yeah um if I just wanted to confirm with you, I did um, ask the applicants to review this and to uh, to provide a new plan, which actually shows that this turning space, if you like here, would would all be tarmac, so that there was a space for the uh, refuse lorries to come up um, and turn um, it, without uh, encroaching onto the paviers. And as I indicated to you, I haven't had an amended plan as yet. If that amended plan is not, um, is, if the applicant is unwilling to, to do that, um, then um, uh, I'm 
you know the application is put toward for you towards you members this off this morning just to be delegated anyway to the head of practice in order to complete the section 106 agreement so i would um imagine that if uh if this plan is not forthcoming then it, it may be something that we would need to bring back to you at a future date could i just bring mr wyman on this one please yeah. thank you chair i can be i think i can be quite quite clear and concise on this point uh, it, it's my opinion that the that when the recommendation when the recommendation is put forward to committee it will be um as, as set out in the report with the addition of subject to the receipt of a revised plan showing um the area of bitmac taken up to include the turning area at the top and the applicate and the the application therefore would not be approved without that plan being forthcoming and if it plan if it plan wasn't forthcoming it would come back uh, it would come back to committee because it would be in if members um decided to approve the application then it would, it would have to it would have to come back so in answer to councillor pierce's question um i i don't believe we would approve this without um a revised plan showing the extension of the bitmac up to the to the top and including a turning area at the top thank you Thank you. Um, does that answer you. your question, Councillor Pierce? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I, I do. Um, I actually have Councillor Cheadle and Councillor Lavashan waiting to come in, um, but I know Mr. Townsend should probably be able to make a comment regarding the street lightning, but just lightning street lighting but before um he does i just wanted to just clarify um uh, on that tarmac issue would there be any implications in the aonb's um view if that was tarmac instead of paviors i don't believe so um chair i think the um they didn't have a, a particular issue with regard to tarmac other than there was a lot of um parking going uh, uh, along the uh, central central route um uh, so I, I, I don't believe that it would have a significant issue from an AOB perspective. Thank you, um, Mr. Townsend. Can I ask you to come in regarding the street lighting, please? Lighting, please. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Good. That's a good start. Um, before we move on to the street lightning, would you mind if I just briefly touched on the block paving issue? Um, in, in my response to the planning uh, authority, I have mentioned that the uh, surfacing may not be acceptable in its current form if it is to be offered for adoption. Um, uh, we would prefer that to be tarmac, and we've always said that we would prefer that to be tarmac. Um, that's more from a maintenance point of view because the geometry is available to operate as a turning head. But I understand what Councillor Pierce was saying with respect to access by refuse vehicles. So it, it was always intended if it was adoption, it would be tarmac all the way through to the turn to include the turning head. That doesn't include the two arms on the left and the right as you go in because they will be private drives. Um, I hope that clarifies that situation. With Thank respect you. to the street lighting, um, can I refer you actually in, in page 15, what I believe is page 15 of the report? Um, uh, unfortunately, because the pages aren't numbered, I'm going on what it tells me is page 15. Paragraph two there, I've clarified what the situation is with respect to street lighting. Um, it, if you'll allow me, Chair, I'll read that out. Um, the Hi okay. Highway Authority takes a more pragmatic approach to the provision of street lighting since the publication of the design guide. If and when there are sound ecological reasons for not having street lighting to a reduced level or indeed no lighting at all. In the event that there are ecological reasons for reduced or no lighting, the Highway Authority will accept roads without adoptable highway lighting, provided that ducting is installed to enable retrofitting in the event that it becomes necessary with a deposit lodge for a period of time, say five years, to cover the installation. The developer can then also install a private lighting system and within the site to a lower luminance level should they choose to or it can remain unlit without affecting the eligibility of the road adoption i hope that clarifies everything chair thank you i think that is possibly on page 37 of our agenda i'm just trying to find it here by ways access um it's 
it's, no, it's, in, not, it's in the analysis section. It's in the responses to the parish council's um, comments. I did a, a, a number bulleted response to that that's in italics. OK, um, page 33. Oh, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, yes, here we go. I, um, paragraph two and page 33. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Is there anything further you wish to add to that? No, no. <clears throat> right, I have Cancer Cheadle, Cancer Vashon and Cancer Ratcliffe. So Cancer Cheadle. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got three questions, if I may. Um, two fairly straightforward. Uh, on the um, uh, recommendations um, to do with the Section 106 contributions, the off-site play contribution, it says there at the discretion of the council. I just wondered if that is the borough council or the parish council. Um, uh, it would be the borough. Uh, it would be the borough council. The borough council. Okay, just want to clear that up. Um, the second one is: Do you know if there's any um, provision within the plans for? these properties to be served with the uh, high speed broadband? I'm not aware of any provisions, no. So they may or may not be. Yes, um, okay, I would thanks. like to think they are, uh, but um, I, 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 there's, no, there's nothing specifically referred to uh, in the documentation about that. Right, I wonder if that might actually be a condition. Um, but I'll leave that to hang for a second. Um, the, the third one is more sort of fundamental. Um, the um, the um, uh, 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 let me get my teeth back in the um, National Planning Policy Framework. Yes. Um, latest edition says that um, major applications and you've confirmed that this is a major in the AONB should be refused in it. In, unless there are exceptional circumstances and I just wondered what the exceptional circumstances here were. Um, uh, in, in my report I talked about this issue because um, it's clear, it's, you know, the AOMB is clearly an important landscape designation which we need to be very aware of with major developments and the MPPF does require um, as you say, only to be allowed in exceptional circumstances. Um, this issue was um, addressed um, as far as I could uh, discern during the um, preparation and adoption of the neighbourhood plan um, because again it was an issue that needed to be addressed at that stage and um, by virtue of the fact that the neighbourhood plan, plan um, assessed assessed the site by virtue of the tests that are within the MPPF um, and, and then, uh, then went on to allocate the site in the uh, neighbourhood plan would suggest that um, that the uh, the tests and the exceptional circumstances have been met in this case. Uh, and you agree with their assessment? Yes. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, um, Mr Weimer. Thank you, Chair. Um, in response to Councillor Cheadle's last question, I've got no, no reason to dispute anything that Mrs Housander has just said, but just for clarity, there are two different uses of the word major in in planning application terms so when an application first comes in and in respect of the point that i think it was councillor hipsy made in terms of policy dev 32.5 um, and when i reported to you on planning performance indicators i indicate whether it's majors or non-majors a major application in terms of procedurally submitted to us is um, anything more than 10 dwellings in the context of the AONB test for major development, that isn't just following that definition. The authority have to make a judgment as to whether or not it is major development within the AONB. So members need to be um, mindful of it isn't the, if it's over 10, it's automatically a major development in the context of the AONB policy within the MPPF. Just simply for the clarity, Chair, thank you. Thank you. I think, could, uh, could I just nip back in there with a quick question, having okay. heard uh, Pat? I mean, presumably, Pat, what you're saying is we have determined this to be a major using our our judgment. I'm pretty sure that's what Jack, the, 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 pretty sure that's what Mrs. Houselander said, 
But, I just, but because this question comes up quite frequently, I just want to make sure that members are aware that just because it's over 10 doesn't necessarily mean it's a major development in the context of the, the MPPF guidance on the, the um, on AOMBs. Yes, but we have determined that this is a major. That that certainly was my understanding from Mrs. House Anders answer. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Just before I bring in the other uh, two speakers, um, just to clarify Councillor Cheadle's um, comment regard or question regarding the high-speed broadband and suggesting that could potentially be um, possibly be a condition and it might be a question that you might wish to place to the agent anyway who's registered to speak. But um, I just wanted to ask Mrs. Houselander, would that be a reasonable condition to impose? Uh, yes, Chair, we, we could impose a condition asking for um, broadband to be, um, um, yes, uh, to be to, to the all of us on the high on the, yeah, yeah. high speed high speed I don't I don't I don't know whether um, I suppose the only question about high speed would be whether um, the high speed network is at is um, available generally within Beer Alston I and I don't know the answer to that mm. that might okay. be the one issue that would prevent that from happening but I, I can certainly look into it if that's so Councillor Cheadle that's worth you raising that question to the to the agent actually when when um, when he speaks. Um, Chair, if I may, yes. um, we can certainly put a condition on request uh, ensuring that they that the the ducting required to put um, broadband into the properties is undertaken. I don't think we can say it has to be um, at, at a certain speed because the the speed of delivery will be beyond the applicant's control. But I certainly think in in the same way we can put conditions on asking that. The, the 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 cabling and ducting is provided to enable um, electric car charging points to be to be installed after the event easily. But it, I, I I don't think we can insist they have to have high speed broadband because as Mrs. Housemaster says, if it's not available, then it'd be an unreasonable request on the on the developer. But we can certainly make sure that the infrastructure is put infrastructure. in. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. And as I said, that, I think that's a question for the agent anyways. They might, that might already be in, in train. Um, I now have Councillor Vashon and Councillor Ratcliffe, I think. Only Councillor Ratcliffe's hand's gone down. Councillor Vashon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Houselander, I'm, I'm looking at the, the plan in front of me on the screen there, and I noticed on the left-hand boundary right at the bottom, there is a, a sort of an access point um, from the, um, the existing buildings road i think that's down view which comes in and i think it was an original um, access into that field is it proposed that that access will actually uh, continue or is that going to be blocked or or a public footpath uh, or, or will there be access to vehicles coming into the into the new site thank you thanks uh, the the current proposal does not um pr propose that it is a vehicular access but it does propose that there is a public route through to Downview, um, the the as you'll notice on the on this on the screen and on the plan, there's a the red line actually stops short of actually a, a going straight into that site, and it's a strange, um, well, it's not strange. It's it's a it's a scenario that we often uh, often have whereby the the red line, if you find, if you like, the land that the application is is made in, and the the um, there's a little gap, if you like. But, before the other development um, starts um, and I've raised this issue on a number of occasions with with the agent to be sure that that route does take place and they said that there is a there is a means of doing it but it's, it's about um, reaching agreement with the other landowner to ensure that um, to ensure that it does actually um, does actually happen um, so and I think I've put a condition on in, in, to ensure that that does that that route does does in, in become a reality once the scheme is, is built out. OK, that that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, um, can, uh, Councillor Ratcliffe, your hand has gone down, so I'm assuming you no longer wish to speak. Yes, yes, that, that's correct. Yes, um, no Mr. Questions. Townsend, answer my question. Okay, that's no problem. Thank you. Um, while I can see Councillor Musgrave's hand is up, only I can only take questions from members of the committee. I'm afraid. I mean, Councillor Musgrave is the ward member, um, but uh, I, I can't take questions from non-committee members. I'm afraid. Um, okay. So, any further questions? 
No, it appears not. In that case, I should like to invite, I believe it's the agent, Mr. Summerfield. Um, uh, first of all, Mr. Summerfield, are you able to confirm that you can hear us and we can hear you? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank sorry. You. Yes, thank you, Chair. I can hear you. And we are lovely. OK, well, I, I'm sure you'll have had the, the, the paperwork, but just in case you haven't, um, just to confirm, you will have three minutes in which to make your presentation. Um, you will have a 30 second warning as you get towards the end. And once you get to the end of your three minutes, I will need to stop you and ask you to wind up with your last sentence, I'm afraid, if you haven't finished. Um, and members of the committee will be able to ask you questions for clarity. OK, so okay, um, you, when you're ready in your own time, away you go. Thank you. Good morning, Chair, Councillors. Um, I'm the planning consultant speaking on behalf of the applicant. Burrington Estates is a five star home builder founded in 2016. They design every development with non standard house types and utilise a range of materials and details that are appropriate to the area. Their motto is to create beautiful living and working environments, build enduring communities, and to improve the quality of lives. This application was submitted in October 2019, and we've worked with officers and consultees to address all feedback. The scheme has been reduced from 37 to 31 dwellings. On-site open space, ecology and landscaping have all been significantly enhanced. The officer's report outlines the key considerations, some of which I'd like to comment on. The vehicle access is acceptable in terms of highway safety, and there will be connections provided to the, for pedestrians to the existing network. Neither the Parish Council or Ramblers Association have objected to the proposed slight diversion of the public footpath through that process. Access to the northern boundary for vehicles would have impacted upon third party land, the character of the AOMB and result in the loss of all or, or certainly most if all of the hedgerow. The highway officers confirm there's no requirement to improve offsite junctions, which are nonetheless outside of the applicant's control. Street lighting would have impacted on the bat protected bat flyway route. So as uh, we've agreed with the highways officer that street lighting wouldn't be installed. The proposed development is supported by your ecologist with a 10% net gain in biodiversity, not currently a mandatory requirement. But the scheme will still provide substantial gains in both linear and habitat features. This is through improved and new hedgerows, open space, landscaping and significant tree planting. Landscape sensitivity has been an important consideration throughout and officers have worked proactively with us to achieve an appropriate scheme. This site is allocated and the applicant is following the plan led system by bringing forward this scheme. The scheme provides for a mix of housing sizes, including affordable homes and the affordable housing officer supports that proposal. A contribution of just under £46,000 has been agreed towards improvements and maintenance of existing facilities, sport, recreation, etc. in Bure Alston. And further contributions have already been agreed for education, the Tamar Estuary SAC. Open space and play areas provided within the, um, the site will be maintained in perpetuity by a management company. The applicant has worked very hard with officers on this project and the proposal is presented, which delivers high quality homes and attractive place to live. We acknowledge the parish council's early objections, but we've met with them and they acknowledge that we've taken on board their concerns, including providing PV panels. This policy, the proposal accords with policies that allocate the site and the principle of residential development has been tested and established. There are no technical objections. In addition to new market and affordable homes, the proposal will provide other benefits. We respectfully request Time. that members support the application today. Thank you very much indeed. That was well timed. You must have had your three minutes running at the same time. Um, OK, um, members, do you have any questions? Councillor Cheadle, did you want to put your question regarding high speed broadband? Ah. I'll go to. Uh, I'll, um, I'll put my hand up and wait my turn. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Mott, please. Thank you. Uh, so then, Mr. Summerfield, if I can direct my question with the issue of solar panel provision on the affordable housing, please. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, as a, um, there's two issues here. Firstly, the PV panels will only be provided on the, the appropriate roof slopes, which the, the case officer has rightly highlighted. The other um, matter is that um, the RPs um, tend to have concerns over ongoing maintenance with PV panels. Um, that's what we understand, um, and that um, 
that from their perspective, they would rather keep maintenance to the things that they're familiar with rather than including technology. So, so there's two two issues here, um, uh, and as, as, uh, as I say, the, the the roof slope and the the ongoing maintenance issues. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Summerfield. I just wondered if there are any intentions to improve the hedging that's around the site. Um, because our, on the plans, apart from the hedging across Will alongside Willowcombe Road, the rest of it looks pretty feeble. And I know it's something that the um, Air of Outstanding Natural Beauty uh, unit uh, brought forward that they they had concerns, and I just wondered if there's any plans to improve what has been put forward so far. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Yes, certainly. The, 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 a detailed landscaping plan has been submitted, and it's been subject to you know a lot of discussion through this process with both um, the case officer and the landscape officer. And also the AOMB have provided comments uh, two or three times on, on the uh, on the scheme. So there is significant um, enhancements really throughout, and particularly the northern boundary, which um, was a particular concern with tree planting and the reinforcement of the hedgerow. So it certainly has been an issue that we've taken very seriously. And, uh, um, you know, we're pleased that the landscape officer, the case officer and the AOMB are now supportive of the application uh, and the landscaping proposals. OK. Thank you for that. Uh, turning now to the fabric of the buildings and the insulation is going to be high quality uh, to reduce the need for uh, heating in the properties. Will this be uh, above the levels required now under building regs or will it be above what is coming into force later this year and in 2022? Uh, for house uh, insulation? The, um, the the properties will be built and constructed timber frame, um, which is um, subject to high levels of insulation. So it will meet building regs requirements, um, uh, you know, certainly um, the current regulations. Now, clearly, if other regulations were to come into place before um, permission was, was um uh, dealt with, you know, that those would have been met, but the, the, the proposal will meet the, the, the requirements as set out today. OK, so it won't be over and above as they are set out at the moment, because the, the planning officer indicated that it was good, you know, the, the fabric for insulation was going to be, you know, uh, a higher level than than is normally expected. I, I think the the um, the the, the the building regs have obviously improved over over time so it, it um you know that the the requirements placed on the developers are are higher than they would have been a number of years ago but the the current specification is um you know f based around sort of fabric efficiency etc which yeah. is um is what we're aiming for here um so it's better fabric efficiency than the current part one um right. So I, I can say, you know, from our perspective, it, it, it meets all requirements um, that are set out for us. OK, thank you. Um, did you have another question? Yeah, I did, actually. I I'm just wondered why uh, on the um, outer finishes of the properties that the stonework is just halfway, you know, in the bottom half. I couldn't see anything. Having looked at the drawing, various drawings and that, there isn't stonework on the on the complete uh, ends, which are uh, reflect the the type of buildings within Bear Alston, where you've where you've got a completely natural stone face, but you you're just doing it halfway. Um, well, yes. I mean, the proposal um, is set out. Um, you know, we've been through quite a long process of discussing detail of design with the AOMB landscape officer, case officer, um, our scheme architect, etc. And the, the what's before before you is considered to be, um, you know, reflective of the local vernacular um, 
and an appropriate solution for this site. Um, you know, Burrington, as I said at the outset, will only they, they every site they start from scratch. This isn't a volume house builder that will will um, use the same house types in um, Devon uh, or, or or the West Midlands. You know, they look at every scheme um, in in, in um, isolation. They clearly need to come up with a scheme that's attractive, that's practical, that um, you know is viable to build, um, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where we've got to really is that, that, that this kind of combination of materials, um, uh, you know, we all ag have agreed are a, a, an attractive design solution. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hipsey. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, good morning, Mr. Summerfield. Um, having you probably heard earlier on my question regarding policy uh, dev 32 from the joint local plan having established that um, this is in fact a, a major development in the context of uh, dev 32 um, i go back to my earlier well i think it was a question about paragraph four which um, basically says that major developments uh, require a solar master plan um, I can't find one um, on the portal. Perhaps I'm missing something. But is there, in fact, a solar master plan uh, in support of this application, please? We've, we've submitted the energy statement and we've submitted um, a plan that, um, you know, confirms the installation of PV. Um, but we haven't been asked to provide a solar master plan. Um, I mean, the, the, the design... Um, you know, obviously the architects are taking into consideration orientation of buildings and, and, and gains from natural light, et cetera. But we haven't um, submitted um, a solar master plan. We certainly it wasn't requested of us. Yeah, the um, reading through the um, energy and sustainability uh, strategy, which I think is the one you're referring to, it appears to uh, concern itself entirely with uh, fabric. Uh, I can't see any reference to solar um, aspects there at all? No, as, as I said, we, we that, that energy statement and uh, the PV relay, that's the information we provided. That's what was requested of us. We haven't been asked to provide a solar um, master plan. Um, Councillor Hipsy, that might be a question you might like to ask one of the planning officers in a minute when uh, Mr. Yes. Summerfield is finished. Um, yes, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cheadle. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, very quick one. Uh, is the developer's intention to uh, service these new properties with high-speed broadband? The, the, in the intention is certainly, as the, um, the officer suggested, about um, agreeing, um, you know, we would expect to provide all of the infrastructure for, for that to be connected, but clearly we can't control off-site speeds. Um, my understanding is that, that, that we would work with open reach um, and, and, and to make sure that whatever the best is available could be served to these properties. Um, well, obviously, this, the scheme isn't, it doesn't include sort of major investment in an infrastructure offsite to um, provide anything other than what's available in Vera Olsen already at this stage. Yeah, you don't happen but, but, to know whether there's some um, fiber connectivity to that area? Um, I'm not aware, no. Um, but certainly the, the, the scheme will provide you know the the infrastructure that would allow whatever is available to be connected so okay thank you um thank you um i, I do have a question myself um please mr summerfield if you would um again just just going back to um the uh solar panels um a little bit concerned to to hear that um registered providers are perhaps not terribly supportive of them because of the maintenance issues has that been your um, experience with with all um, registered providers or um, with the <laughs> with the weapon of choice if you will the the, the registered provider that um, will be um, dealing with this site um, that that's um, a sort of general understanding um, that, that 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 the the RPs registered providers sorry you know, we'll obviously have a keen eye on ongoing maintenance um, liabilities, and that that's our experience to date. Um, you know, they, they they prefer, yeah, to to avoid that sort of technology on um, 
properties that are subject to rental. Okay, thank you. I might just pick this one up. The question's up with, with the officers in a minute as well once we've got through to that. Uh, Councillor Cheadley, your hand is still up. Is that a historical hand or have you got another question? Nope, it's, he's gone again. Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, no more questions, I don't think. In that case, sure, there was one question before. What you may have been expecting me to answer about the paviors, um, and, and to confirm, we 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 agreed to that proposal. Okay, lovely. Yes, thank you very much. So you've agreed to the the plan to provide the plan regarding. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. In that case, thank you very much indeed for your time, Mr. Summerfield. Of course, you are very welcome to stay and um, listen to the remainder of the meeting. Um, next to speak, we have. Um, Councillor Brian Lammer of the Parish Council. Um, Councillor Lammer, are you there? Could you confirm if you can hear us and that we can hear you, please? Chair, we um, seem to have a bit of connection issue with Councillor Lamb, and we're just trying to get him back online. Okie dokie. In that case, um, while we're waiting for Councillor Lamb to come back on, there are a couple of questions that did come out that do need to perhaps go back to the officers. So I will just give opportunity um, for any members, if they did wish to clarify anything with the officers. Um, Mr. Weimer, I think you perhaps had some that you were perhaps able to pick on, pick up on particularly, please. Thank you. Yes, I, um, I'm a little bit hesitant for this because I'm no doubt Councillor Pierce will, will correct me if I've got this wrong. I've been doing, been doing a little bit of digging in the background and my understanding, um, is what a colleague has provided to me, for me a minute ago, is that the installation of broadband is now a requirement of the building regs and what's been shown to me is that this approved document referring to approved document R introduces a new requirement for in-building physical infrastructure which enables copper or fiber optic cables or wireless devices capable of delivering broadband speeds greater than 30 um, to be 30 megabits to be installed the requirement applies in England to new buildings and existing buildings that are subject to major renovation works and applies to both dwellings and buildings other than dwellings approved document R takes effect on 1st of January 2017 um so my my view reading that um my view is that actually it's a it's a matter that the, the installation is a matter that's clearly covered by building regs and would be outside and therefore would be outside the, the necessity for having a um a planning condition because it's covered it's covered by other legislation thank you okay lovely thank you um can, can you hear me now yeah, the uh, Councillor Lamb, yes, I know you are back in, so we will go, go back to questions for officers in just a second. Um, yes, we can hear you, which is wonderful. Um, and as you probably heard, but just in case you, you weren't present throughout for Mr Sunfield's presentation, um, that you will have three minutes in which to make your presentation. And at the end of that three minutes, well, you'll get a 30 second warning. And at the end of that three minutes, members will have an opportunity to ask you any questions for clarification. So um, when you're ready, um, then please do feel free to make a start. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair and Councillors, the Parish Council supports this development in principle. However, your planning officer has followed our neighbourhood plan and stated that two of the material considerations are highways and pedestrians. However, the Highways Department have ignored the NP recommendation that the site entrance should be on Bedford Street. They have stated to us that no application has been made to them on this issue. The developer states that the visibility Visibility displays cannot be achieved on Bedford Street as it is a 60 mph road, but he ignores that this would become a 30 mph in place of the Woolacombe Road proposal and that the adjacent bowling club entrance is on the 60 mile hour stretch. The two alternative routes are unacceptable as we will have to choose between two different crossroads. Bedford Street and De the Down. Could I have photo one, please? This shows how far a vehicle has to enter the Manger Road to have clear visibility and the other junction, photo two please, shows Collie Town Crossroads with similar hedges. Photo three is again the Bedford Street Junction, the route for town and school buses, the village lorry route and road to Weir Quay. An average of 350 vehicles use this in the morning peak hour. 
There is ambiguity about street lighting and road adoption. Condition 8D imposes street lighting, whereas the developer, paper 17412, states there will be none, based on an ambiguous bat survey of the southern hedge being a bat flying route. However, they have removed almost half of this hedge, which he states will be replaced with a 1.8 meter high boarded fence. The site will be a black oasis, surrendered by streetlights with down view estate to the west, the bowling club floodlit rink to the east and the main traffic route to the north. What about the safety of the residents, especially disabled users and children, not forgetting the bowling club members using the public footpath? Non-adoption of the site's roads also has an effect on rubbish collection. With a parallel, parallel view situation to down view 17 houses, photo four please, Monday morning which is causing unbelievable tension amongst local residents. The minute rubbish area shown will still have to cater for 11 houses, most of them affordable, against the 17 of Downview. Surely members cannot accept such a situation in a rural village, a major part of the AMB, and adjacent to the World Heritage Area, with a site which is also on top of the unique Permian Ridge. Finally, I would ask you to consider deferring this application to enable the planning officer, highways officer, developer and ward members to come up with the solutions that are acceptable not only to us, but the future residents of this development and of my parish. And I also thank the planning officer for such a comprehensive report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. Um, I, uh, I have a question for you. It's Councillor Moyes, please. Um, yes, how many houses are now needed in the Beer Alston area? I think the last survey was done about four and a half years ago, which really, you know, puts it out of context now. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer because most of the recent sales of houses in this area are to incomers, uh, as far as way as America, uh, London um, and Birmingham. I know because my daughter is uh, in that business. Um, but there is a need in the village by local people for affordable houses, a very large need. Fine, thank you. Um, this this application doesn't go along with the neighbourhood plan, I understand. Um, what does the parish council feel about that? Oh, yes, yes the, uh, the application in principle is complies with our neighbourhood plan. Um, oh, right. it, it didn't at first because they wanted to do 37 houses and we objected oh. and that was drawn and reduced to 31. We asked actually for 30 in the plan. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cheadle, please. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, Brian, um, I just wondered if when the neighbourhood plan uh, agreed that this site was an acceptable site, um, they made any specific recommendations in the neighbourhood plan about the um, the access to the site, which uh, so clearly uh, is an issue for you. Yes, a very clear uh, uh, access issue was shown, saying that we preferred the access to Bedford Street, as do, uh, as you will know from the objections that have been received by the planning officer, I think she states that the majority of them are about the access to the site. There's a great deal of local disquiet because of the problems that I've indicated uh, that, uh, that a major site should come out onto such a small rural road and going through those two junctions, depending which way they go. Junctions so, where so, just, so just to be clear, this application as it stands is directly in opposition to the recommendations in your neighbourhood plan over access? Yes. Thank you. Um, OK, I, I will at some um, point go back, I think, to the planning officer of clarity on that one, because page 27 of our agenda indicates that it, it was a, an, an agreed alternative. Um, but we will come back to that one. I have uh, Councillor Renders, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Councillor Cheadle, because you just asked exactly the question that I was going to ask as regards to <laughs> the local plan. So uh, thank you and thank you, uh, Mr Lamb, for answering that one for me. Brilliant. Thank you. Madam Chair, just comment on the last answer to Councillor Cheadle on um, access. The main if it's 
If it's um, an uh, answer to his question, yes, go, go on. Uh, the neighbourhood plan says the preferred site access should be directly onto the main road to Tavistock, B3257, into and out of the village. However, if this does not prove feasible, an alternative acceptable access onto Woolacombe Road would be acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that is actually in the officer's report. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for clarifying that one. Thank you. Um, and members, do you have any uh, further questions? Councillor Moyse and Cheadle, if you finish, could you take your hands down, please? Unless you have further questions. Uh, I've Councillor Pierce is. Oh, yeah, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> uh, hello, Councillor Lamb. Um, I understand in your neighbourhood plan, there was always uh, there, there was uh, reference to the road junctions and should development take place on this site that there, um, there was a requirement to improve the two junctions that are a real danger uh, spot. Can you confirm that I'm correct in understanding that? Yes, I, <clears throat> that's my understanding too. It, the, road, the worst part of the road junction is the high hedges which preclude any visibility um, to, to the left on, our, on, on both junctions. Okay, thank you. OK, uh, any further questions? No, it appears not. So uh, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Lamb, for your time. Um, and you are, of course, welcome to stay until um, the committee has made a decision. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. OK, um, I have um, some people that I've um, officers that I wish to ask for responses on one or two things. Um, Mr Townsend, um, I'm hoping you are still here. Um, and could you come in, please, with regard to the high raise issues that have been raised? Um, well, I think yet again, I think I've, I've addressed those in 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 my um, my response to the parish council issues that we looked at. And I can't remember which page you referred to, but I think it's referred to in page one there. Um, on, on the report. I'm sorry, I'm frantically going through it, trying to find it now. Um, um, I think it's probably on page 33 of our agenda. Yes, and it, was, where... it was 16 of mine, I think. Bear with me one moment, <laughs> Chair. I do apologise. Yes, paragraph one. Um, as um, and no, hang on. No, it's 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 the it's the, it's the fourth that I've said there, where I've covered the the issue with respect to the two junctions referred to, the the intensification of those junctions by the development that is proposed. Uh, we have we obviously have to consider the application as submitted um, with with access from Willowcombe Road, as as Councillor Ham alluded, we've we've never seen any proposals for access direct from the B Road to consider or assess. Um, we, 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 we've, we've considered that the impact on those junctions and the number of vehicles that will um, be generated by the proposed development in accordance with the transport statement that's been carried out by the, by the applicant are not sufficient to warrant any concerns from a highway safety point of view, given that we're looking at one additional vehicle every three minutes at the maximum through either of those junctions so it, it's not an issue obviously we're aware of their constraints and we're aware of the the issues with them also they're beyond the control of the applicant to do anything to resolve the situations um or, or to to improve the situation at those junctions okay thank you um Mrs. Folds, I, I wonder if I could just ask you just to come in. There's, again, these, these are issues that have, been, that have been highlighted perhaps by the registered speakers and just wanted to really get a, a different view of. Um, the, the, the whole issue um, surrounding potentially registered providers not being prepared to um, use solar panels. Uh, to my mind, there seems to be something that perhaps local authority, if this is the position it is with, with this particular application, it might be to do with a direction as well of, of how the, the, um, uh, the, the, the properties are facing. But is this an issue that perhaps the local authority should be picking up, um, generally speaking, um, because that clearly flies in the face of all the climate um, control issues that we're dealing with at the moment? Well, it, certainly we we do want to encourage solar panels on on uh, on, on all properties that we can. And the experience of our uh, affordable housing officers is that RPs are interested in the provision of solar panels within their um, within their property portfolio. 
I, I, I can't I can't say for all that does, doesn't mean you know Mr um, the applicant's experience may, may be very different but that that's certainly our understanding so it so it is something that we would be keen to encourage as, as far as possible um, if the uh, orientation of the buildings permit. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Haslander, did you wish to come in on anything? Ms. Haslander, you indicated that you wish to make a response Sorry. to something. Sorry, I was on mute. Apologies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, just to say that the applicants were not asked to provide a solar master plan um, based on the fact that the energy statement that they submitted had actually addressed the uh, Dev 32 point about 20% below uh, building regulations and um, the orientation of, the, of the, some of the dwellings on the site were, was accepted as being um, appropriate to some degree of solar gain. Okay, thank you. Any members have any further questions? Okay, then I'm going to move the recommendation as laid out on page 20, which is to delegate to the head of practice lead development manager in conjunction with the chairman to conditionally grant planning permission subject to a one, uh, section 106 le legal obligation, um, which and the report lays out those following contributions. Um, is there a seconder for that, please? Happy to second, Chair. Happy to second, Chairman. That's a very dear thing. <laughs> Thank you. So we can get off mute quickest, isn't it? <laughs> OK, so members, we are now in debate. I need to turn my piece of paper over to write people's names down. Um, and Chairman. I have... Chairman, Sorry? does the ward councillor... When does the ward councillor come in? We don't have a ward councillor registered to speak. I was registered. I'm afraid there's been a cock up. Oh, my apologies. I did you. I did have you down. I have just missed you off your list. I am so sorry, Councillor Crozier. In that case, um, can I just check uh, with um, uh, Mr. White that I can now take that because that's my error. That is correct. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, my error. I do apologise, Councillor Crozier. Um, you can have your five minutes and we will um, move move, uh, move the motion later yeah. on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, the <coughs> contribution I'm going to give today includes my other ward, Councillor Robin uh, Musgrave, Councillor Musgrave. Madam Chair, Councillors, the application has been brought before us today in order to highlight the concerns of the Beer Ferris Parish Council, also residents who have made observations and objections to this development. Number one, access to the highway. Requested in this application is onto Woolacombe Road, directly in front of bungalows on the opposite side of the road. We'll now have the intrusion of vehicles exiting 31 properties. The PC would have preferred an exit to be positioned on the north side of the development onto Bedford Street. This would enable the 30 mile an hour speed limit to be moved beyond the bowling club exit with the benefit of a reduced accident risk by slowing traffic approaching the down uh, crossroad. Street lighting. In the consultant's report, it has been possible, it is possible to have street lighting designed not to be harmful to bats. Three. It is noted there's an area of reserve for re refuse collection. Picture four, uh, I know it's number three, I think. Um, is it for all the houses? We do not want the same situation as we've had with the last development, picture shown earlier for 17 properties, and this proposal is for 31. Imagine the mountain of refuse. The resident who lives in Downview, where the rubbish is collected from, has to go out and disinfect the pavement from noxious liquids running from black bags in summer, maggots crawling from refuse. <coughs> it was thought that <coughs> it was thought it would come. Uh, da, 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 so I come back. Yeah, <coughs> the down road view, uh, the down road and uh, Bedford Street crossroads. Um, this was thought to be improved when the down view development came, but in 2014, this was turned back down by appeal. The College Town Crossroads is a very similar situation with very poor visibility to the left when exiting Woolacombe Road. 
and both these roads have hedges and the hedges grow for at least uh, at least 12 inches further out in the road. In the photographs, they were trimmed. The highway officer is forgetting our aspiration to move the 30 mile an hour limit beyond the bowling club exit. He deems it would take out 70 metres of hedge bank. However, most of this was removed under a planned condition for the bowling club exit in 2005. Collie Town, uh, yes, we mentioned that already, I've got it duplicated. However much highways wish to ignore this situation, there could be solutions which they have not enlightened us with. I suggest they review the Highways Act 1980 and look at sections 72 and 73, and that which could allow modification for these junctions. The village of Beer Alston has been developed over several centuries and the road work is the same as it was in the 1856 OS map. Narrow roads, very few pavements, and the older parts of the village only street parking. There are many junctions that have zero visibility. Since the 50s, over 700 houses have been built, most during the last 45 years. Most households have no two cars. And the junctions we've highlighted today are the, per the pertinent ones to this application. Barrington homes have gone the extra mile in wanting to install solar panels and raising installation values. However, the Paris Council would have liked a district heating system, an example which could have been achieved. It is much cheaper on initial bill than a retrofit afterwards. The consultants ruled it out in their comprehensive analysis with other systems as it would not cur currently qualify for RHI payments. I have used this opportunity to publicly emphasise the need for robust neighbourhood plans and their adherence but all parties have to believe in doing a lot more. The neighbourhood plan is our strength, accepted by all parties, including the Devon County Council, with wide publicity between councils before it was finally approved. Would it not be better that the committee adjourn this application so that all parties can agree solutions to these major material considerations, all of which could be sorted before the next meeting? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Crozier. Um, I, I do have two members who've got hands up, but I suspect we're hands up for in debate. But um, I just wanted to check if anybody has any questions for Councillor Crozier. Councillor, what is your question? Or, um, uh, not, it, it wasn't for Councillor Crozier. No, that's fine. Chair, we'll, sorry, we'll... it was more really a clarity when we do move on to the vote. Um, because obviously a few extra conditions have been added to those listed yes. on the agenda. If we could have those listed, please, or clarified before yes. we vote. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. I did, I did miss them off anyway. So, um, yes, I, we will, I will <laughs> readdress that. Um, Councillor Renders, was yours a question for Councillor Crozier? If it's no, it for wasn't, a... Chair. No, it was okay. to do with what Councillor Hunter said and also a little bit of debate. Thank you. Right, fine. We will hang fire then on that one for now. Does any other members have any questions? for um, Councillor Crozier. No, nope. okay. Then um, thank you, Councillor Crozier, for your time in that. And I am sorry that um, I didn't um, uh, invite you to speak. So I've got bits of paper everywhere here and a very small desk and everything's got a little bit out of order on the desk. So, um, okay, thank you. Councillor Moyes, did you have a question for Councillor Cozier? No, hands gone back down again. Okay, right. In that case, I'm going to try again <laughs> to move the recommendation as laid out on page 20, but we need to have the additional, which I won't read out again, with the addition of the, um, the uh, subject to the receipt of the plan showing the tarmac surfacing, um, as well and, and on the section 106 to include the additional ecology conditions. I think I've remembered them all. Um, Mrs Hall, is there anything I have missed out there? I believe you've covered the two, um, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, is there a second of that then, please? Happy, Happy to second. Happy to second. I couldn't go off the mute either then. <laughs> I couldn't. It wouldn't no, move. Mine wouldn't either. Well, Thank you. Thank you. 
get, get very nervous when nobody comes back to me. OK, so members, we are now in debate. <laughs> um, and I have, uh, right, I'm just going to take these from the order that's on the top. Councillor Mott, Councillor Renders, Councillor Moyes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have just had it confirmed from our um, housing officer that our local uh, housing provider does not have an issue with maintenance on the solar panels. Therefore, I will, I'm afraid I will push the issue of solar panels on the affordable housing. I appreciate that not all of them will have the right alignment to be able to benefit from the panels. However, I cannot believe that all of them do. Um, and therefore, I will ask for that um, condition to be added to that social units that are able to, because of their alignment, have um, solar panels provided, please. Is there uh, a seconder for that, please? Happy to second, uh, happy to second. part of mine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, right. That is Councillor Renders a second that one. Um, Counts, uh, sorry, Mr. White, I want to check. Um, do we need to just debate that as an amendment, or can it be taken as the whole? If if you, as proposed, the chair is happy to accept that, that would therefore fall into the substantive motion. So okay. it would fall into one. Okay, thank you, um, and Mr. Weimer. Sorry, chair, I've got a, um, a bit of a technical. Um, issue with with how that's just been worded um the the provision of solar panels on a roof it require planning permission in their own right and it and so i don't believe we can in, we can put a condition on saying impose panels what we should be doing and what we can do is add another requirement to the the in the same way that it's approved subject to the receipt of a plan showing the the bitmax surface it could be approved subject receipt of further plans showing the provision of solar panels on the um the social housing or the the affordable housing so it, it, we have a plan showing where they're going to be and a condition saying they should be installed rather than it done being done by by condition so the the end result is the same but it's just done it's just achieved by a slightly different um route and i'll try and explain that slightly better if, if i've lost members on that one. OK, um, that that suits my requirements, Chair. I, I'm happy with um, how Mr. Weimer is dealing with that. And your seconder, which I yes, think was several. happy with happy with that as well. I just I just written on here. Why not? Yeah, the affordable, okay. So, yes, yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I'd be happy in that as the original mover. So, OK, so that that now, now forms part of the substantive motion. So we can continue with with the debate, generally speaking. So we have Councillor Renders and then I think Councillor Hipsey, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, no, I was funny because I, I spent a lot of time reading through this yesterday and it's uh, interesting to get the added um, information from um, Councillor Lamb because uh, I was looking at that and I did look at the rose and I found his pictures that he gave because I, I think we've got disaster waiting to happen here with the, with the entrance to this mm -hmm. and I'm very much against the way that it's laid out in the minute. I like the idea of the affordableness of it. I like the fact that it fits in with a lot of it and I think that's what the, the parish council themselves said. However, I have got grave concerns about the uh, traffic to this and the exits and entrances to it. They do cause me grief and I'm not sure I want to go um, and support this as it is at the minute, but I'm open to being persuaded, so I will hand over to somebody else. Thank you. Okay. Um Councillor Moyes, your hand has gone down, so I'm assuming you um, no longer wish to speak at this moment. If you do, please put your hand back up again. Um, and then I have Councillor Hipsey. Whose hand has just gone down, so assuming that was a historical hand. Councillor Cheadle. Oh, mine's the current hand. Thank you very much. Yes. Brother, I'm, I'm sorry, Chair, I was muted. It was, uh, and I took my hand down when I started to speak. OK, um, well, if you, um, OK, so if you want to speak, Councillor Cheadle, if I can ask you to remute again a minute, because I, I do get feedback, I'm afraid. Um, so, Councillor Hipsy, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, I was trying to be good with my hand and uh, <laughs> 
mucked it up. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still have uh, some misgivings with uh, condition 22 uh, regarding energy and sustainability. Um, we seem to be relying entirely on this energy and sustainability statement that's been written, written by AES sustainability consultants. Um, having read through it, I'm, I'm not an expert, I, you know, I, I will stress, but having read through that statement, it seems to deal entirely with fabric, uh, the fabric of the buildings and the use of, uh, of fabrics to um, reduce um, CO2 re uh, emissions. And I, I can understand that, and I mean, it makes sense. But um, And again, I, I, I am somewhat naive in these matters, but it seems to uh, be content to bring the levels up to 2013 standards. Um, it, 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 certainly in the conclusion, it, it talks all about the latest 2013 building standards. And I'm not sure that 2013 building standards are, are sufficiently rigorous for where we are now in 20, 2021. Um, I, I just, I'm just worried about that. And, uh, and also, I, I, I would back that up by um, also a bit saying I'm concerned about this the solar panel idea of only having it on the big houses as well. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Cheadle. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, disappointed really with how we've, we've ended up with this application. Um, in particular, the fact that uh, having put a huge amount of work into their neighbourhood plan um, and while supporting the development in principle, um, the fine details which make a great deal of difference to local people um, seem not to have been accommodated. And I'm very taken with the proposal that uh, uh, Brian Lamb came up with that uh, were it not for an opportunity for the neighbourhood planning group and the developer to sit down and iron out a few of these relatively straightforward issues, um, there could be nothing but wholesome support for this application. So uh, I'm minded to not support this and ask the developer to go back to the neighbourhood plan group and try and iron out these uh, relatively small but important differences. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm actually I'm going to ask, to ask, I think it's I think Mrs. It's Folds cool. probably for this one, just as a response on this, if this is something that can be considered. I hadn't taken chair that it was that that had been moved as yet. Um, so that and I, I thought that Councillor Chisel was still in debate. I mean, it, certainly it, it, it is a matter. It is a matter for you whether um, whether it should be deferred to see that there's some further accommodation. Um, I'm certainly satisfied that you can determine it. If the issue is primarily about the access um, onto the site and, and which road it's from, uh, I would, of course, as you would suspect, is, is urge caution there uh, because the, there's been no objection from the Highways Authority and you've discussed quite a bit in detail today about the, um, the, the suitability of the highways access in, in the proposed location um, and, and without a highways objection if that were a reason um, I mean deferral is slightly different but if that was a reason for um, seeking to refuse the application then we've got a difficulty here um, w without the support of the Highways Authority. But at, at the current stage, I didn't think that Councillor Cheadle had actually um, stated uh, that he was moving to forward at this time. No, um, I just wanted to check what the position is when we've we've got something actually on the table. Thank you. Um, Councillor Crozier, I think. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, what I can allude to this on this access business, one of the reasons why we wanted the Bedford Street is because opposite the current site on Woolacombe Road, we have another development site scheduled for 20 houses. And that would mean 100 cars potentially coming out onto Woolacombe Road. And this was sharing the load. Um, the highways uh, have... Um, uh, we questioned highways late December 
and we've never had a copy of his report until this document was published for this meeting today. So we haven't had to go into any further deliberations. They base it on accident record, et cetera, et cetera, and they have to be injury access, uh, accidents. We know there's been three serious accidents on the Collitown crossroads with cars turned over, but nobody has been injured and the people have settled it by insurance only. They haven't had to call the police or call the ambulance. On the down Bedford Street crossroads, daily there's near misses. It's just through absolute luck that we don't get, you know, bad accidents. It's not, and it's not good enough, as I alluded to in my report, to forget that the, the, we have to move with the times. The house on that particular corner uh, is a relatively modern house, and I've been trying to find the planning document because there might be something in the planning document of a condition which would allow greater sighting, as if it was the same as the um, bowling club. You know, we probably have to go back 30 years to find it, but I, unfortunately, the house name doesn't tie up um, and I haven't been able to locate it. And I just hope that helps develop the debate on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have Councillor Piers. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I have grave concerns about this application and whilst the uh, architects have put together a good scheme in principle on the site, there are a number of issues which really concern me and the highways is one of them. Um, and I, therefore, and I, I did mention it before, you know, very early on in our discussions on this uh, application, and I think it should be deferred until we can get a few things sorted out because there's so much information that's coming through at the last minute. And I think it is very unfair on the expecting the committee to make a decision today. Um, I, I, the leanings are with some members and also mine is to refuse. I cannot support the officer's recommendation at this time. Um, it, Willicombe Road is virtually a single track road and for the amount of traffic that uses that during the summer months is quite substantial. And I think, you know, <laughs> despite what Highways officer has said, I don't think that the uh, infrastructure has been upgraded in Burleston. In my time, in the last 20 years, the amount of development that has taken place in Burleston overall was quite significant. And yet there's never been any upgrade to the highway infrastructure. And these two junctions in the summer months are quite lethal. And I think that, you know, we need to go back and think about this again. And what is the point of a community doing a neighbourhood plan if the points raised and the recommendations put forward are just ignored? I mean, I was quite surprised at the highway officer saying that he'd not been presented with a plan um, where the entrance came out onto Bedford uh, Street or Bedford Road. So, you know, what is going on? There seemed to be a lack of working amongst the various parties um, when you've got a neighbourhood plan that's been approved and there's a legal document and, and you know, we're not taking the, the recommendations or the views from, from the parish council or from the parish as a whole, which is what the neighbourhood plan is, is for. So I'm, I, I am going to ask for a deferral, Chairman, on this. I, I mean, obviously, we have to take uh, um, advice from uh mr white and mrs folds on this because i i wonder if we're too late in to the uh application we've had debate and everything whether we can ask for a deferral at this stage but that's what i would like to propose please okay um is there a seconder for that yes i'd second that um if we do go to a vote on the application i will be voting against OK, so we have a proposal and a second up for a deferral. So that is what we will need to vote on. I think the only thing I'm going to just simply add in at this stage is that we know historically um, in terms of highways issues that if it's um, 
you know, we need to take the advice of our highways officers um, and equally remind members that the um, there's been reference made to the neighbourhood plan uh, for Beer Alston, but the, the neighbourhood plan does does actually state that um, an alternative access onto Willowcombe Road would be acceptable. So I just wanted to add that back in in there a minute. But um, is there any debate then on this um, uh motion to um, defer. Um, Mrs Folds, you, you wanted to say something? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. It was again, it was just to be clear what what the reason for deferral is. Um, uh, as we said already, uh, that the, the highways has given very clear advice. Um, I, I do uh, have some concerns with what Councillor Pierce has said in, in that I don't think it is the case that the uh, the neighbourhood plan has been ignored. Uh, it has been considered and there has been definite improvement in in that the reduction of, of the numbers of houses have gone down, come down. But yes, the highways, um, the, the access is in a different location. Uh, uh, Mr Weimer uh, has also uh, made the point to me, uh, which I think I should uh, reiterate here is is that uh, if you were going to seek to relocate the access then that would be a significant change to the application that's in front and would probably require um, uh, a re-advertising of the uh, of the application um, so it, it would put you back to square one it, it's, it's not that I'm not sure that these issues can be overcome by a, a deferral really if that's the if that is the reason for the if that is the reason for the deferment. Mr Wimmer. Yes, thank you, Chair. I think I'll, I'll just elaborate on, on that point Mr Foles just made. The, I, I, if we are talking about seeking to relocate the access from one end of the site to the other, then I can't see how that can be dealt with through a deferment of this application, because I, I believe that I need a fundamental change to, to the layout, a fundamental change to the the access point and I think um, it would need to be a fresh application um, and I am I, I'm I think it's very difficult to um, persuade an applicant to move an application from a point where the highways authority is saying the, what's in front of us is safe and acceptable um, and just and the, I, I I think we probably also need to we, we do need to bear in mind that the there is a I would suggest a chance that, that we would end up with a non-determination appeal if the application isn't determined today. Um, right, I've got... Um, back there, Chairman, please? Just, just, just a second, if you would, please, Councillor. I was going to invite you to come back in, but I have a list of people who wish to speak when we're debating on the deferral. Is Councillor Pierce, Councillor Moyes and Councillor Crozier. So, um, Councillor Pierce, please. Um, I, I wasn't asking for deferral to change the position of the entrance. My my reason for deferral is the amount of information that's come forward verbally across all aspects of this application. And I stated that quite early on when we started discussing it. My concerns are is with the two junctions, whether we could have a def with the deferral um, we could uh, engage or the officers could engage with highways to get those two junctions improved. I think the, the you know, continually we're getting this situation and especially in a, in, uh, a, a large village, which is now uh, known as the largest village in England, Bear Alston is, uh, because the amount of development has taken place over the last 20, 25 years, you know, and yet there's no improvements to the infrastructure and those two junctions in the summer are lethal. So I think there needs to be some discussion about making improvements, which was requested in the um, neighbourhood plan was put forward. So that is the reason not to change the entrance, but because the entrance is coming out into um, Willicombe Road, those two junctions need to be improved. Thank you. Okay. So the purpose of the deferral is to enable discussion about improvement to the junctions. Being clear on that. Yep. Uh, Councillor Moyes. <clears throat> yes, I, I will again second that. I have to say that, um, as you know, that I, I sit on the Dartmoor National Park Planning Committee 
And um, I think highways need to take a bit of a review. There are very few applications where, very, very few, where they raise any concerns. And I think we should take note of the local community um, and how they view these actual uh, junctions. OK, thank you. Um, Ms. Haslander, are you able to um, comment um, with regard to the neighbourhood plan, please? Yes, Chair. <coughs> yes, Chair. I just wanted to confirm in my report, um, which you have in front of you, I deliberately went through every aspect of policy H2, which is in the neighbourhood plan uh, with regard to this allocation. Um, and nearly all of the aspects of the neighbourhood plan policy are addressed in, in the report. The um, Policy is very clear that the preferred access is off Woolacom Road. However, it does very also also very clearly, which you've also mentioned, state that the Woolacom Road could be an alternative and would be an acceptable alternative access to this to this site. With regard to the other aspects of the of policy H2, um, as I said, they've been addressed quite fully in in my planning report, and um, it is my view that uh, we haven't gone against the neighbourhood plan. We have tried to address every issue with regard to that policy uh, in the report. And the only issue that I would say is perhaps m more marginal is regard with regard to housing need, but all of the other issues are, are met in my view. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Townsend. I'm also going to ask you to come in, please, that if this was um, deferred today, um, is there any scope within this application for um, through the section 106 or wherever it would be for those that junction to be improved? Thank you, Chair. As, as I've already um, um, referred to in my response to the Parish Council's comments, the improvement of those junctions involves the use of land outside uh, the applicant's control. Uh, we also have to assess applications based on the guidance in the National Planning Policy Framework. That does not mean um, that we're not taking on board what the Parish Council are saying, but unfortunately the document we are relying on is the National Planning Policy Framework document, and that makes it quite clear that uh, we can only refuse applications on highway safety grounds if the junction, if, sorry, if, if the access is not safe or suitable, and if uh, if it would cause, um, uh, sorry, can you, um, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I've, I've lost 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 my train of thought on that one. But safe and suit, safety and suitability are what 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 are important. The important thing here is that there is no personal injury collision data to support the um, perception that these junctions are unsafe. In the event that it went to an appeal, an inspector would consider that the accident collision data at those junctions and would form the same opinion that we have about their safety and suitability. In fact, the, when the previous adjoining site was considered, that was similarly refused on highway safety grounds by the planning authority, contrary to the highway authority's recommendation, and was allowed at appeal because the inspector agreed with the highway authority's perception on those on the um, suitability of those two junctions to serve the development. For that reason, I'm not entirely sure what can be achieved at those junctions to improve the situation. And as I said, I've not seen any applications or any plans that show the, uh, uh, the access coming from an alternative route out onto the B road. Thank you, Mr Townsend. Um, Councillor Crozier, please. You've just remuted yourself. That's it. You're on. Yeah, there we there. There we are. Yeah, um, Mr. Townsend is quite right in uh, what he says. He says he can only re react to what the developer asks, uh, which is unfortunate in many respects. But having said that, um, when um, um, the planning officer Jacqueline Houselander states in a report. Um, about all the objections, 
And most of the objections were on highway issues, and in particular, this particular junction, Bedford Street, the Down. In fact, one of the uh, Paris councillors who made an objection and posted it on the portal, put it on Facebook, on the local Facebook. And he had four, over 40 uh, comments agreeing with what he said within 24 hours. So it is an issue. Unfortunately, I don't, well, fortunately, I don't do Facebook, but and nor do a lot of other people. But it is a very popular medium these days, to, and it does give you a gauge of seriousness of where, what people um, think of these things. And I, I'm sure that we could come to a solution there quite amicably um, on trying to either remove some of the hedge causing this obstruction. The photograph showed um, uh, with the hedge trimmed. You know, normally in the summer, there's another 15 inches of growth. And in fact, the highways officer, local highways officer, actually asks the residents to trim their hedge on that particular corner because it, and then of course the hedge grows again. But we, we um, you know, we do support the, the plan in general, but th this issue does need to be sorted out one way or another. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I mean, this is an allocated site, so any development on that site, and there is the option for access onto Willicombe Road, which is going to impact on that junction, irrespective of, of who actually develops on there. Um, I've got, I can see Councillor Pierce waiting to come. You have spoken once, Councillor Pierce. I'll let you sum up at the end regarding this particular piece about deferment. Councillor Renders. Thank you, Chair. It was just an answer to, to Mr. Townsend. Actually. I mean, I know we're using the statistics that it's based on the number of accidents. Well, you could have a new road that's just coming onto a main road, and because there's never been an accident on there, we would use that and say it would be acceptable. I think looking at it and looking at the pictures and looking at the, the local knowledge that we've got of this, you know, it's clear to me that, that the extra um, traffic that, that's that's going to be generated coming at that particular is going to cause a problem. You know, I, there's got to be a solution to this somewhere, um, and I'm still not changing my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to be able to vote for this one, I'm sorry. Okay, members, bearing in mind what we will be voting on is about deferral, not actually um, uh, about a de uh, determining the application at the moment. Um, uh, Councillor Pierce, did you wish to sum up on this? Yes, I... I, I just have major concerns as i've said before about the uh, these junctions with the increased traffic especially in the summer months i am concerned that perhaps the neighborhood plans are not being looked into early enough when the approved neighborhood plans when an application comes forward uh, because you know it was it's identified those two junctions are in the neighborhood plan and I think in in when a, a, a planning application comes in for an allocated site like this, um, you know we we need to be discussing with all parties, um, you know when any junction improvements need to be made. And I have to take issue with um, uh, Mr. Townsend um, over the fact that he says that you know he indicated that if we were to refuse this. Um, we'd likely lo to lose appeal on highways grounds. I remember not long ago, probably two years ago, we had a similar situation in Lamerton. Um, we refused it because of the danger of the highway and the planning inspector upheld the council's decision. So um, I feel sorry. I do apologise to Mr Summerfield because your plan in principle is good for this site but we have to look at the dangers that are going to be created by the extra traffic because it is a very busy, virtually single track road, uh, very busy in the summertime with people going down to um, Weir Quay and, and Beer Ferris. So it's, it's a difficult one, but I feel that if we can defer, and I would ask Mr. Oh, the ward member, whether an approach could be made by the parish council to the landowners at these junctions if they were willing to donate the land for improvements and that would overcome the highways comment about it being in separate ownership um, i think you know that's something we we, we could you know perhaps look at um yeah. but i feel that i i think it would be very unfair 
on the um, on the applicants, Mr. Summerfield is speaking for the applicants uh, to refuse it point blank. But certainly, I could not support the royal officer's recommendation, and that's why I'm asking for a deferral. But I, I, I echo once again, I, I am not happy with the amount of information that came forward verbally at the meeting today across all aspects of this application. It simply isn't acceptable. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, um, Mr. Townsend. Graham has emailed. Um, yeah, before you come in, Mr. Townsend, uh, Councillor Crozier, please could you put yourself on mute? We're getting a lot of background noise. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. Thank you, Chair. I just had to say something about what Councillor Pierce said. I did not say quite clearly. I did not say that this application would fail. It would would be allowed if it went to appeal. What I said was that the site adjacent was allowed at appeal when it was refused on highway grounds. I did not make any uh, presumptions as to what would happen to this application if it were to go to appeal. OK, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm now going to take this to the vote because it's uh, clear there's some very strong feelings on this one. So what we are um, voting on here is for deferral. OK, this is not determining the application. This is to, to vote as to whether you are for deferring or against deferring. If members are against, then we will go on to debate and determine the application. Um, so, Mrs Hall, please, could you take the vote? Thank you. So, sorry, Chair. Can I just be, my apologies for interruption. Can I just be very clear, please, on what the reasons for deferral are? The reasons for deferral are um, from Councillor Pierce because he wishes discussions to be carried out um, with the um, Parish Council and Neighbourhood Plan Group um, and with highways and with the planning officers with regard to the improvements to um, the, the junctions. And I can't, I can't remember the name of the junction, but it's the junction where we saw all the traffic together, which I think is Willicombe Road and is it the B Road? Um, I believe it's 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 the junction. It's, it's the junction. It's the Darren, Darren Bedford Street junction. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Mott, are you clear on that? Thank you. So this is solely a highways issue, effectively, that we yes. are deferring on. Thank you. If if we vote to defer, that would be what we'd be deferring on. Okay, Mrs. Hall, could you take this to the vote, please? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Cheadle. Thank you. Councillor Crozier. Uh, I agree with the deferral. Thank you. Councillor Hipsey. Um, I've been present throughout the debate and I agree with the deferral proposition. Thank you. Councillor Mott. As it is solely on a highways issue, my I do not agree with the deferral. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Moyes. For deferral. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Um, support the deferral. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I've, I've listened to all of the debate which has been on so far on this and I agree with the proposal to defer this application on the grounds of highways access. Thank you. Councillor Renders. Yes, OK, um, I'll agree for deferral and I heard everything that was said. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vashon. Um, do not agree with the deferral. Thank you. Councillor Yelland. Against deferral. Thank you. So that's seven, four and three against. OK, so this item will be a deferred um, and we'll come back to the committee in fullness of time. OK, thank you very much, members, um, and thank you for visiting the speakers for um, sticking with it. OK, um, we now move to item seven on the agenda. Um, and I'm minded that perhaps members would have wanted a break, but I, I'd rather we deal with the planning appeals update and wrap the meeting because we do have a full council later on. Um, so, Mr Wymer, please. Thank you. I've, I've managed to just delete my my copy of uh, Michael, with the agenda screen, if you're happy that I can just go through the appeals without having. And the, members have all got paper copies. Members Fine. should have okay, all paper good. copies anyway. So, um, <laughs> yes. Excellent. Um, so the the first the first one at the top of the, the page is the um, 
the, the Bickham bungalow. Um, that is, the application was a new dwelling to replace an existing bungalow, um, but not on the same site, um, a little bit of distance from it. Um, it is in the AMB. The the argument being put forward for why the replacement, if the replacement dwelling had been on the same site, I don't believe we, we would, officers would have had a problem with it. Um, the reason put forward for it being on a different site was that the existing bungalow, which the inspector notes as being, I think the phrase was tidy and untidy and run down, um, was unrestricted in terms of its occupancy. So it wasn't, an agro it wasn't tied agriculturally. It was next to a working farm. And they argued that that, that location was impacting on the immunity um, of the of the dwelling so they wanted to replace it um, further away um, officers view was that that caused harm to the uh, the Airbnb the inspector accepted that the appeal site did contribute positively to the landscape and scenic beauty of the Airbnb um, but felt that the the benefit of moving the property away from the working farm um, effectively outweighed the harm it was going to uh, it was going to cause um, and the the application was uh, the appeal was allowed I have to say from a personal point of view I, I'm still baffled by by this one a little bit I, I um, I'm, I'm struggling to to follow the, the logic of the inspector but that it's it's one of those things um, planning decisions there's a degree of subjectivity in them um, a full award of costs was asked for by the applicant. Um, that was um, refused, but we did have a partial award of costs against us, and and I'll go th I'll go through the reasoning for that. And it, it's gonna I need to have a further I need to have a conversation with legal colleagues to because I uh, again I thought the the council stance was correct. Um, the inspector felt that the second reason for refusal of the application was um, unreasonable and the second reason for refusal was that in the absence of a planning obligation to ensure the residential use of the original um, Bickham Barton bungalow um, was permanently ceased what we what we didn't want was to approve a replacement dwelling on an alternative site without securing the removal of the dwelling that was being replaced if not if the, the argument falls away um, so we, we said in the absence of a planning obligation, we weren't satisfied that a suitably robust method of ensuring that there would not be a gain in the number of dwellings had been provided. The inspector took the view that that was unreasonable because we could have dealt with it by um, a planning condition. Um, given it's a different site to the application site, I, um, I wasn't persuaded that it could be dealt with by by um, a condition and a 106 was the appropriate way forward clearly the inspector um, has disagreed and I'll, we'll need to have some further conversations with legal colleagues to to see whether it's um, to see where we go if we get similar applications I'll happily take questions on that one before I move to the the other three Councillor Pierce I believe you had your hand up gone again Yes, Councillor Yes, thanks, Pat. I, I'm just wondering if we're going, I know we can't make any formal representation to uh, the decision for uh, Bick and Barton Bungalow, but I just wonder whether we make any representation that or question why this has been allowed when it's not a replacement actually on the site of the uh, previous building. I mean, that was the application and it just, you know, to move it the distance they have from the site of the other one is quite bizarre. Yes, yes, Councillor, we could. My experience with um, with doing a, a letter to the, the, the Planning Inspectorate's Quality Insurance Unit is that would it would come back saying it was a it's a matter of planning judgment and if we want to challenge it we need to go through the appropriate channels um i, I think i think the inspector has set out why they disagreed um but i think from my perspective and i, I suspect from your perspective we we simply we simply disagree with that logic yes definitely yeah okay thank you okay okay the, no. Sorry, Chair. 
Yep, now I was going to say another question, John, that one, so carry on, please. Um, so the the other three applications are all for, oh, sorry, the other three appeals are all for um, development at Ashby Golf Course and Hotel. Um, I'll get the costs out of the way to start with. There is an application for costs made on all three of these, and that that was dismissed on all on all three. So there there are there are two fundamental issues. The first one is an application for sixteen new lodges. That appeal was dismissed, um, and the inspector took the view that, that effectively that the location didn't accord with um, policy in terms of sustainable settlement pattern and there hadn't been an identifiable need demonstrated to to justify an additional 16 units. The other two appeals were both in respect of occupancy conditions that had been placed on an application for three lodges and another application for 12 lodges, both of which had been approved in, in 2019. And the Whilst there are there, the conditions were worded slightly differently, they both effectively required occupancy in connection with the the golf um, complex and the, the golf and the leisure and hotel complex, um, and that the the lodges should only be let in association with that adjacent adjacent complex. The inspector did acknowledge that the application documents for those 2019 applications did use phraseology and infer that the lodges would maintain ties to the existing business and it was not made clear that the business model was to sell um, each individual individual lodge which is what's what's been sought now the the officer's concern was that if it wasn't tied and it was um, just a, a any standard holiday occupancy condition that it would affect it, it would just open, it potentially open the door for second times. It wouldn't be gen potentially genuine holiday accommodation to support the business, which was the, the argument put forward. The inspector disagreed um, and considered that it was it was appropriate to. Uh, so the, the appeals were allowed, but it did retain a standard holiday occupancy condition. So they can only be occupied by um, people as a holiday unit and not as a permanent residence. So that those have been approved. Those two appeals were approved. Again, happily answer any questions if I can. Any questions, members? Stunned into silence. Okay. Lunchtime. Um, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> not quite. Councillor Cheadle wouldn't let a small thing like lunchtime stop him. <laughs> Councillor Cheadle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I was just going to say that. Um, uh, these applications uh, and a couple of others ha are, are causing a um, a conversation um, which uh, hasn't been had yet, but is sort of planned to take place about um, us understanding the uh, the dichotomy that sometimes exists between what looks like a sort of pretty ordinary planning application and a genuine inward investment into West Devon. And I'm, I'm not picking on these particular applications, but um, uh, I think the conversation so far has gone along the lines of, you know, we can't have our cake and eat it. We can't refuse applications and then wring our hands wondering why inward investment isn't happening. So uh, uh, I say I'm not commenting on, on the actual applications, but they are uh, food for thought uh, and that um, is being taken forward elsewhere. Thanks. Great, thank you. Any other members? Nope, it looks like not. Um, so uh, according to my agenda, I think that means we've wrapped everything on it, even if we have danced around a little bit. So I will now declare this meeting closed at 12, 12, 12.43 and say thank you all very much indeed for your time.